Is that what you call the order? The RGB and the old policy board meeting, Wednesday, August 31st, 2022, at 3 p.m. So, can you roll call, please? Yes, sir. Uh, just for the record, this was uh, on the Secretary of State of Oak Point Street at 3 p.m. Trevor County? Present. Udall County? Present. Star County? Present. City of Brownsville? Here. City of McAllen? Here. City of Edinburgh? Present. City of Mission? Here. City of Farmington? Present. City of Farm? Present. City of San Benito? Present. Trevor County, RMA? Right. Metro, here, Textile, Dollar GBDC, here, Parking Department, we have forms. Uh, we don't have any public comment, but I do want to uh, review. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I do have two, two minutes I want to make. First of all, I'd like to uh, ask for a moment of silence and some uh, prayers. For Mr. Quintus, his mom uh, taken ill, and that's why he couldn't be with us today. So uh, I understand she may be in hospice already. So please keep her and uh, Commissioner Quintus in prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And on a little brighter note, we want to celebrate a young man's uh, rise to fame and claim uh, for 15 years of service. Andrew, will you please stand up? Is that right? I said, yeah. I threw everybody off. If I say good looking, you would never have to be in there. Wow. Wow. Oh, for my thing. I appreciate that. Why don't you sit down, Andrew, and I'll just go to the next one. Wow. He thought he was going to get away with it. So, I'm going to leave out of the little But we haven't done anything else for the last, well, now it's 18, but thank you. Uh, Item 4, Consent Agenda, Item 1, Approval Minutes for the June 29th meeting. Any changes or corrections? If not, that's a motion to approve. Second. Uh, I'm sorry, the city mission. Correct? Sorry, I guess you all start. Uh, all in favor? All right, all, all opposed, most clear. Item 2, discussion possible action for the approval of Category 7 funding cap resolution 2022 15. Uh, yes, sir, this is something. All right, well, yes, sir, this is something staff just wanted to bring to the policy board, and we've had the requirement. Uh, back to the days of the Hidalgo County appeal, and then even uh, there was a gentleman agreement after the merger that Category 7 funds were kept on project at the time that they were adopted. And move forward, so we wanted to update the resolution. We we're having a new UTP and a new tip cycle uh, to bring that to the policy board for consideration. And it simply states that, excuse me, category seven funding for each project is authorized for each phase of right of way preliminary engineering and construction in the long range plan is capped at the amount shown on the category seven funding as approved by the transportation <coughs> policy board. And that category seven funding as identified in the MTP. Which belongs to plan, not fully expanded upon completion of the project, will be utilized to fund additional projects as approved by the RGB and DO transportation policy. All right, I've got a quick question on that too. Yes, sir. Um, if, if this were to be adopted, the um, caps um, would it preclude us or limit our ability to add funding to the project after it is listed? Um, and, and the reason we ask is obviously projects evolve and change. Yes, sir. Um, and wouldn't we be hampering ourselves or ending our ability to address a project uh, if we set the cap limits? I see it as something that the policy board would want to look at and identify on a case by case basis. Um, the original thought on this when we brought it to the board and when we were using four votes to try to 
that fiscal constraint may be a little responsibility on the forecasting of the cost of the project. It doesn't preclude us from from adding to it. No, sir. That would be on a case by case basis. We're just trying to incentivize, making sure we get as accurate as possible budgets, so that somebody doesn't say, you know, I need five million to get the project in, and then as we get closer, well, I need another six million to it's really an eleven million dollar project. I think it's a good move. I mean, we've, uh, I, mean, I, think, I think Cameron actually does it, to be honest, better than we do. Uh, How are you doing that? <laughs> it, looks, it also will, we don't want to have it to be abusive, right? Because a lot of us, uh, whether it's the county or in the city of Park, we have projects and we've been following the rules and we, we can't just be, you know, subpar or saying, you know, it's really going to cost me, like I said, five million, but it, I know really it's going to cost me nine. I'm going to take the county money. Because I didn't forecast correctly. That's not fair. And to follow along that, we want to be sure that that doesn't happen for anybody, and also it makes us all uh, more more reasonable in our projections. I agree. Uh, okay. Just a, a quick question. So it can't do exactly this the resolution. It talks about capping right of way, preliminary engineering, construction uh, case of. Correct. So, when we say in the NTP, that's all inclusive from year one to one and three. Correct. That is inclusive of the four year tip and the 10 year UTP. I want to make sure that everybody is checked out. Yes, All right. Any other questions or discussion? Marriage. So, I know it's a case by case basis. So, uh, even though there's caps, what's the process from the response? What's from the process? If that's I, I think that would be simply the way we do all of the projects. Question to submit it to staff and then staff to bring it to the policy board for consideration and recommendation on how to move forward. And it would allow you, the decision maker, to have a conversation on whether or not that was a good move or not, and then provide staff with guidance on how to move forward. Anything else? All right, no further discussion. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion to approve right now. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, Mr. Terry? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am very special possible action to approve the federal functional classification of the International Drive PHA 0921 263 and South Federal Corridor 3 PHA 0921 06 257 resolution 422 Good afternoon. Um, we have two requests for federal functional classification. Um, the first one being from Rio Grande City, and it's for International Drive, which is a new facility, and it's from US Highway 83 to Grid Road, and it's a length of 0.8 of a mile, and the classification that's being requested is an urban minor collector, which is the lowest um, eligible for federal funding. And uh, it's within the STEM currently within the year of 2024. Um, so all um, projects requesting federal functional classification have to have a construction phase within the STIP, and both of these do. So moving on, the second one that we have is from Cameron County, and this is for South Parallel Corridor Phase 3. Um, phase 1 and Phase 2 have already um, acquired functional classification, so this is the last phase also requesting for functional classification. The limits are from FM 2520, FM 1577 and it's a length of 2.15 miles and they're requesting a major collector and they also have a construction phase within the STIP of the year 2023. If there are any questions on these um, items, we take yes sir. For us dumb people, can you not use FM? Can you elaborate that like Harlan Jim Brown go that point eight point eight? What does that mean? FM 2520 or 1577? That's Harlan Jim. That's actually in Cameron County. No, I believe it is. It's in the Harlan Jim area. area. Yes, sir. So it's from there to. Yes. Great. Right. Another yes. Area. Yeah. I'll, in the future, I'll go ahead and put down also the name of the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll do that as well. Uh, just uh, one okay, quick comment. I, I fully agree with the request. Uh, in the future, I just want to make sure that we have two separate resolutions so that when we submit the, the packets themselves, okay. they're only packaged with just that one roadway to help us with the FHWA processing sometimes. Okay, is that a resolution for you? Yeah, yeah. I and they're both together, it makes it a little harder. So, separate resolutions. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, but that's one thing. So I didn't appreciate it. Well, okay. Is it? Oh, it is an action. Oh, yes, yes, but, but right now the resolution includes both. Yes, sir. Okay. So why don't we make that change as part of the motion? That we could do that. We could go forward with 2022-16 and 2022-60A. Okay. Okay. Motion. Motion by uh, City Commission. Second. Second by uh, Commissioner Diallo. Yeah. Um, <coughs> by the way, Commissioner Diallo. Um, and a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, most favor with that second. Yes, sir. And we'll have to send that over to you. Uh, 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 item four, discussion possible action on the updated cap sale and scoring and evaluation plan. Yes, sir. Um, I will just take this one as well. Um, this has come up um, a couple of times for the CAT 7 um, project scoring, keeping in mind that this is for mostly off-system projects, not within um, the textile on system. So the first change that has done is that's being presented today as a result of our last policy board. So these were requests that were actually brought on by this board. We presented those over to the technical advisory committee and that MC approved an agreement to move forward with those changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over those changes once again, just to reiterate. Um, in order to promote um, project readiness, um, the items that were actually um, given more weight this time around is for status of schematic. Before it was only five points, so now they're gonna be awarded 10 points for that item. The other one being environmental status. That one is also gonna be now 10 points. Right away status is also 10 points. U utility status is also now 10 points. Um, in order to keep the 100 points of maximum points for the overall form, we had to adjust it on other items. So therefore, um, we went ahead and reduced the points from 10 points to five points <coughs> on It was um, access to transit facility. So that one before was 10 points, so now it's gonna be on getting five points. And the other item now is access to existing pedestrian facilities. It's also going from 10 points to five points, giving the other points over for project readiness. And the other item is regional, regional significance is also now five points opposed to 10, what it used to be. And congestion reduction, which is now down at the bottom over here for the internal office use. That one is also now five points opposed to 10. Um, another change that was requested too um, was prior to for access to pedestrian facilities and miles, it didn't say existing. So we just went ahead and stuck the word existing in there. So now it's access to existing pedestrian facilities and miles. That was just a minor edit that we made. And also at the bottom <coughs> of the form, which is the, the new one is here on the right. So you're looking at, we have put it down at the bottom now for a contact name and an email address so that we know who to follow up with. And those were pretty much the amendments that are being moved to move forward. Um, this, if approved today, will be the new form that will be used to score for off-system CAT 7 projects. Any questions? It's an action item. Oh, for a condition to accumulate 100 points. Yes, 100 points. Now it used to be 170. Recommendation? Yes, sir. Mr. Mark. Any other questions? Discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve? I move that this item be approved at this time. Do you have a motion? Second? Second. Second by Pete, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, discussion possible action on the RGB NPO self certification document and administrative modification. <laughs> So the self-certification document is a better requirement for you to include into our TIP document. That was something that was submitted already. In fact, last week we officially submitted it to the SIP portal. So we're patiently awaiting its approval and that is due for November of this year. Included within that comprehensive TIP text document that was already approved by this board was a self-certification document. According to the SHWA and FTA, we need to make some minor, limited modifications to the wording of that document, which includes.
included in this packet and went ahead and made those changes and now we have this document for signature today and then we'll include that in the initial modification to the project. So if there's any questions regarding the changes or the document itself, I'd be happy to entertain those. Any questions? Okay, thank you. It's not in there. They're recommending approval. Thank you very much. Yes. Motion to approve. So moved. That was my own thank you. Second. All right. And there is one. All in favor? All right. All opposed? Motion. Motion to carry. Item six discussion regarding category seven funding request for highway projects. So just a few quick notes before moving forward. Uh, table that we have within the packet today, and this item is a discussion item for just a reminder. Yeah. Uh, and when the, the tables we'll get into are going to discuss the category requests, category seven requests themselves that we received from the local government uh, regarding the meeting that we had with the field staff and our textile partnership partners. Also, the current program, the UTP or Unified Transportation Program, the 10 year forecast the allocation from that document, as well as where we would be if we were to on any proposed request. But as I mentioned, as note, the 2023 UTP was approved yesterday, so we will be working with from now on until the new UTP in 2024 gets approved, that annual allocation for Category 7 will be on out. The current program for our UTP for those UTP years was approved in May of this year, and the short-range year plan, the TIP, 23 to 26 is pending FA survey approval and that's scheduled for this November as I previously mentioned. If you go to the next slide, it's typically going to be working. All of that, yeah. <coughs> So this table was presented at the project selection workshop back in March of this year. It was also presented to the technical advisory committee in June, as well as the policy board in June. This table was presented at each individual meeting with our local government from Edinburgh, City of Michigan, and McDowell, Florida, and the county precinct as well. One thing that I would like to note is that fiscal year 2032 is allocated a total amount of 32 million. $750,614. That is the new year of programming with this new UTP. Otherwise, the previous UTP covered years 2022 to 2031. The total delta for the new UTP years is $40,224,850. The delta for 2032 was not listed on this particular table due to some over programming issues we're faced with in UTP years 22 to 31. If we could go to the next slide, please. Sure, real quick. Yes. Real quick review, please, to uh, explain or address the over programming issue. Yes, it, and if I could, if I could just advance here to this slide, please, if you have it there uh, noted. That way we can use that for reference. So, to begin with, as I mentioned, the previous UTP year, 2022 to 2031, we're over programmed by 12.57 million, and that's the note with an asterisk at the bottom. So the UTP allocation at that time, uh, 288.59 plus the 62.64 carryover, in other words, unobligated, unspent funds from fiscal year 2021, and the programmed amount in our NTP at that time, and we're over programmed in those years by 12.57 million. Now we're transitioning to the new UTP, the new Unified Transportation Program. So currently programmed, and as I mentioned, approved in May of this year, we have the amount of 346,930,212 with a UTP allocation of 328,810,387. That leaves with a balance, a negative balance, of negative 18,092,825. We received word from TxDOT, TPMP, in Austin and verified this with our partners here at the Far District. The staff reviewed these numbers and realized that we have funds carried over, unobligated, unspent funds from fiscal year 22, only the amount at the time when we created these tables of just over 75 million. And that's the number represented in that center box. 
So the available amount for additional programming is just over 57 million. To be exact, 57 million, 27,175. This is for the entire region. So the RGBNGO total. So you also see a breakdown of it in decimal form to relate that towards our NTV, the way it's broken down. And if I can go back to that table, I'd be glad to entertain any questions regarding this now that we've gone over those old programming numbers and understood. If there is any questions regarding this table, what I would like to share with the members as well is this table that is slightly revised from its older version. Now, we met as staff and we met with our tech stock partners, our local governments, TPMP up in Austin, as I mentioned. It's a lot of numbers and it's not meant to be confusing. And when you look at the first column on the left, those are the allocations per year for the 2022 UTP. And then we look at the allocation, the money that's been allocated to the MPO on the new UTP by fiscal year. And from that, we're able to create a delta or a, you know, a, a new balance, if you will, added money to our <coughs> budget. And then broken down by percentages for each area, the same way that our MTP is broken up. So we have three areas, the Brownsville area, part of the San Benito area, and Hidalgo. And then we have annual delta percentages and totals as well incorporated. However, I would like to note and not forget that our total amount of allocation for the new 10 years of 20 to 32 is still 328 million, 810,387. And I'd be happy to entertain any questions regarding this table at this time. The difference between this table and the previous table is only that, I apologize, sure. The difference between this table and the previous table is just that the year 2032 is accounted into the numbers. So we wanted to show you the full picture. Thank you, Andrew, and that is correct. We did show that full amount in 2032 previously back during the original workshop and any other time that that table was reviewed or shared amongst our local governments, it was indeed missing the total amount from 2032 because at that point, staff was aware of an over-programming issue. However, with numbers changing, the UCP not being approved and us receiving requests for additional Category 7, we wanted to make sure that we knew that our figures were accurate and we could share that with both staff and policy members. So this is a summary of where we're at as of today. The 2023 UCP allocation again is listed and these amounts are abbreviated in by decimal into millions. So the fiscal year 2022 carryover funds are listed and our total amount available is 403 million Point nine three. So currently programmed from 20 to 32 is 346.9 million, which leaves us a balance of available funding of 57.03 million. Yes, for the panelists, pause there for one second, just so we can clarify because we speak this language every day, so we acknowledge it. What we mean by currently programmed are the projects that were selected last year at this time that make up the 10 year plan as it is right now. So we have to add that allocation with this allocation and then subtract those projects. So that's what I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. That currently program, those are the projects that the policy board adopted last year uh, at about October when we updated the UTP and all those projects that are listed now. So I just wanted to clarify. No, thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. And that's true. And it is a lot of numbers, and like I mentioned, it's not here to confuse anybody. So as of May, our most recently approved short-range plan, which is the TIM, and long-range plan, MTP, that is our current programming amount. So we're now looking at a balance for the region of just over 57 million. So as proposed from our work with our local governments and our partners at the FAR district, we have listed here two very significant major projects from the region proposing $20 million Category 7 for each project, IBTC and East Loop. Cameron County, specifically the Brownsville area, submitted $9.39 million in additional Category 7 requests. Hidalgo County submitted $28.04 for a total of $77.43. Now keep in mind, these are the prioritized projects 
So we do have a list of every project that was submitted from our meetings, and we try our best to fund projects number one, two, and in some cases, when possible, number three. So the highest priority of projects for everyone that we had a chance to meet with that submitted requests to be good. And there's a few notes there at the bottom as well, squaring up to that balance, but I think we've, we've covered that pretty well. I think we covered that Does yes. anybody have any questions at this point? I want to hear that. That would lead us in mind, this is just proposed, and this is just for discussion, with a balance of just over negative 20 million for those 10 years. So from 2023 to 2032, we're looking at being over programmed by just over $20 million. Most importantly to remember, our short range plan, the TIP, what was just uploaded and was pending approval by the feds, has to be fiscally constrained and within those amounts that we just did. Right now, we may be a little over programmed in our 10 year plan on our MTP, but we have time to work with that. Personal opinion and the, the opinion from staff is that we're just very careful with over programming because we're going to run into these projects in the near future. When it's time for these projects to move into our short range plan, but we don't want to be over programmed at that point because we may be forced with possibly moving projects out to stay within our mission. So, mentioning that. Let's not forget the College and San Benito area. Their 2023 UTP allocation for the new year, 2032, is just over 12 million, 12.13 to be exact. We honor that amount, and that leaves us with a final balance of negative 32 million, 25. So, what do you say that we honor that amount for the College and San Benito? Even though know, they did not submit a project, we, we realize that they had banked that amount. We, we, we owe that to them. <laughs> for, their, for their next project. Yes, sir. Exactly. All right. I just wanted to clarify. If there's any questions regarding this summary where we're at right now, we have to get into it. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. So, just remember, I'm going to Jeff. So, I'm going to ask a very basic question. So, <coughs> 57 million a million, right? And that's just some of the calculations. Is there a reason why the breakdown of the proposed priority projects would not be high enough to meet that 57 million? Well, not so much that it's not itemized, Mayor, if I may. Um, we do have some tables that we haven't looked at yet where it will show individual projects, the amount requested, and what's already programmed to that project as well. And also the projects that are not being proposed at this time, but are still considered prioritized, that we have accounted for and we do have polls for. However, those projects do amount to a larger amount than what's available at this time. So I guess what staff is trying to propose is that we we already have our projects prioritized by our local governments, and we concur with those projects, and they're in good shape for staffs. And then we focus on those first while we can with the money that we have available before moving on to other projects that may continue to over-program us in the near future. And, and just to, to follow up question, is there, is there a metric you need to know what the Oh, yes, of course, and beginning with project status, number one is how far along are we on the development of these units? Preliminary engineering, the right away acquisition, and how close are we to going to construction? We also have, and if I may, to this chart here, this table, these are all the proposed projects with their detailed requests by fiscal year. We also have their initial SIP approval date. That's the, the short range plan for the entire state, which is abbreviated as the SIP, right? Their initial approval date. So the first time that that project phase was approved on the SIP, we went ahead and listed that there so we get an idea of the lifespan of each one of these project phases. Also, we have project scores that we implemented using the Category 7 off system project scoring material and forms that we use are filled out by our local governments. We have a scoring percentage, so it's a little bit easier to see because as of right now, and we're looking at hopefully adopting this new form, and the scoring percentage reflected the old form score. So we're trying to make it a little easier to understand where you really would lie as far as the percentage goes. But it's the same amount as the score there. And then functional classification status, something very important. If a project is not functionally classified, we cannot program federal dollars to that project or to the rates. If we were, let's say, to propose a project in the short range years of 23 to 26 that doesn't have functional classification, 
hate to say the word reject, but we would, you know, throw up a red flag, you know, basically come back to us and say this project can't receive federal dollars at this time because of its lack of functional classification. So we also added that as well. And, and just one last one. Uh, sure. And, and I know I know what Andrew was saying in terms of all how far you can um, um, and it's more of a question for whatever the policy makers um, mm -hmm. I know that Yes, but not into the districts. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. That seems to apply as with our bylaws from the emergency that we are honored to each subject, and it's based upon the category C form. Thank you, Gary. They're very good questions, and I think it helps us all understand the process as well. So, this particular table, if there's any questions I can entertain, it's not too much more information than what we're going to continue to see as we look at the next few tables. This is just broken down by area. What is being proposed? The amount for fiscal year? Yes, go ahead. Good question, and thank you for that. At the beginning of this year, we were looking in the deadline for submittals for the long-range plan, the MTP, and the short-range plan, the TIP, that we needed to amend and create. So the short-range plan for the first time was created in years 20 through 26. So we had a project update call. We wanted to know where everybody was at with their existing projects. And also, were there gonna be any new projects submitted? How those projects were gonna get funded? Take a look at our budget and see where we're at. So basically, we made that deadline of the end of February, I believe, February, 28th for all project submittals to be received by MPO staff. We evaluated those submissions, we shared them with our partners at the Bar District, and we realized that we received an overwhelming amount of Category 7 requests in excess of over $200 million. And this was to the region. So it's understandable. There's a high, high demand for improvements to infrastructure, existing projects, and new projects as well. So we did our best at that time and we scheduled a workshop to explain where we're at, what we could, and what we could not do. And we, much like these tables presented in the packet today, presented some tables, including that Delta table that we went over earlier. And just like I mentioned, try our best to explain that we really can't afford all these requests. Now, mind you, not every local government submitted requests for Category 7. There were only some. And those are the ones that our biggest concern was with. And our intentions were to continue working with those local governments and all of our local governments in planning for the future. So we set forth a plan, prioritize projects, and we would meet with the individual governments that requested that money individually and then bring it back to both our technical advisory committee and our policy board to review with them and ultimately come to this point where <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, it's been a long process. <laughs> yeah, so, so I wasn't a part of that uh, discussion, mm -hmm. and so basically we had a little demonstration in the panel, right. and so I would like to have the opportunity to have that meeting and, and uh, make sure that the projects that we want to move forward, we move forward too. Thank you. Yes, and that is our intentions from and the NPO staff side. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and nice to meet you as well. So, what we would like to do, now that we met with some, but not all, our local governments, is continue meeting. And if we need to do it on a monthly basis, quarterly, biannually or annually, whatever it takes to plan for the future, we're willing to do so in the same manner that we've done with our local <coughs> governments this first time around. But I do want to mention, the, the main reason why there was such a uh, dire need for these meetings was because of the requests and to prioritize those projects. Now, we're aware that the entire region can prioritize the projects. Well, it needs to, and that's our goal, and that's what we want to do. So, Henry, how do we all say? We will. We will get to meeting with everybody as soon as possible, but we did want to present what we received thus far and what we were able to prioritize. Them. Even as an example, if you will, for moving forward with the rest of our projects, and basically just giving everyone an understanding of where we lie with our current program, well, how much money do we need to be able to this month? I also have a question. I was going to interrupt when I uh, was in a part of this meeting. But I believe that Commissioner Fuentes uh, might have sent some requests or some uh, 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 items that he felt uh, to 
together with some of the cities or the majority of cities, uh, should be a priority to uh, fund them uh, with uh, the money that was allocated. Uh, obviously, I, I don't think they show up here. Uh, while we can uh, create a workshop or something that we need to discuss uh, that or and see uh, their concerns as far as uh, uh, how the money could be allocated. And you know, I don't know if you have any information on that or if you know of the request that we can do with the mayor together with some of the city. Yes, Commissioner, and thank you for mentioning that. Let me ask that question because I'm one of those two. Yes, Mayor. So, there was the letter, what I call the future letter, that had nothing to do with the city of Florida. I don't want to the city I speak for my city. The county is not speaking for me. But when I saw a letter come through, I, there's no signature on my behalf because I know, like they mentioned, I know what I need. And the letter was sent out, a request was made on how to divvy, in theory, uh, funds that they were. Requested by my good friends of I mean, these are my friends. They have and I understand that for the record, if you answer that question, that is a request from Zawa County, not mine. So I, I let the neighborhood send Vision McCallum and Pennyburg to my point to make sure that if you answer that question, don't do it being that box. Understood. Thank you, Mayor. And I think there might be some money that, that doesn't exist or does exist. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so I'm just asking the question so I can relay the. Uh, to you know. Yes, sir. And I understand completely. And thank you both. And I want to mention that in this. Three. Yes, sir. Okay, sure. I apologize. No problem. Just for the sake of clarification, we did receive a letter from Commissioner Fuentes and some of the other cities and uh, precincts did uh, uh, produce uh, identical letters to those with the breakdown that was identified in the letter. I think the, the biggest hurdle for us to overcome is that stated in the letter was the belief that we had 40 point round off 50, uh, excuse me, 50.5 million dollars to move forward with over the 10 years. And uh, we don't, because as Rudy showed at the beginning of the presentation, we had an 18 million dollar negative balance to begin with first. So we had to work towards recovery, and unfortunately, that was all the document. So it only came into play on the projects that were being requested from the Hidalgo County side. You mean the geographical area? Yeah. Yes, sir. Not the yes. No, no. Yes, the geographical area, not the county. No, no. When, 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 correct if I'm wrong. And the when we when we merged, we had the three subregions: the Hidalgo, Orange County, and Hidalgo County. And when we did that, the Hidalgo County uh, MPO was over obligated, over obligated at 18 or maybe I'm wrong. It was a different number at that time, uh, Judge, but to your point, yes, we carried that forward with the adoption that we did of the 10 year plan last year, and that made us 12 million and change over. Since the adoption of that plan last year, we've had some projects that have shifted, and that's what got us to the 18 million and change that we identified for the plan. So, I think that the recommendations that were made by the commissioner's letter are, are very pointed. I think they're great projects regionally. It's just staff had the hurdle to try to overcome that there is not $50 million. And there wasn't $50 million to begin with if we covered the $18 million. Now, should the policy board decide uh, and staff implements, that's what I'm here to do. Hypothetically, the policy board was to say, okay, well, we're going to divvy it up the eight ways that were shown, move forward with it. It would just make our negative balance move from 32 to 50. And I'm quite certain that that would set up alarm bells with tax time and we would force to remove projects from our 10 year horizon. So the first thing staff wanted to do was cover the $18 million negative in our checkbook, if you will. And that's what brought that number down. Um. So we actually had about 26 million that was shown on the first table that show Rudy had. Uh, hopefully you all have your packets. As opposed to the 50. As opposed to the 50, it's 26 million and change. And that's a, a part of why we didn't count the 32. Actually, by the time it all got said and done, uh, the Hidalgo County region, uh, we have $21 million and change in projects that were selected from the recommendations that we received. So we're very, very close to those recommendations is just not everybody got every project that they wanted. 
Some of those projects were selected based upon the scoring, like Rudy talked about, the ranking process that the policy board approved. Uh, those projects were also selected through the one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions. And Mayor, I think you bring up a great point. That was the previous administration. So we'd love to sit down and find out your priority and work within that now that we're having the discussion. Um, so that's where we are. I just want to make it abundantly clear. We do not, and we didn't have $50 million available for the Hidalgo County region for project selection. I have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. On the list of uh, CAT 7 proposed priority projects, are, are any of these projects, uh, can we, or can you, find funding in other category funding, other, other categories? No, ma'am. The MPO has the responsibility of selecting for the off-system projects <laughs> out of category 7. Uh, we work in conjunction with TxDOT on their selection of projects for Category 2, which is those roadways that are on the Texas system. Okay. Uh, and then there's safety uh, allocations and such. But for the most part, what we do here and the responsibility of the board is to identify and move forward with Category 7 projects for those off-system projects that are much needed to the region. Can you, um, you know, again, I'm new. What, it's no problem, Mayor. What does IBTC mean? It's the uh, IBTC project, which uh, we've had on the books for some time. It's an RMA project <coughs> that goes from the Far Bridge over eastward, picks up from the Donna Bridge, and then curves no northward to connect with Interstate 2. It's a high-speed uh, arterial, so we can try to remove that truck traffic from the Far area and Donna area. Uh, we look at it from the staff side as regional. It's Far, Alamo, Donna. Um, and it's uh, a safety project for us. Actually, Andrew, no, no. So the the no, that's there's twelve. First of all, there's twelve categories that you have to get yourself familiar with, uh, Mayor. Yes. How they fund it. So once you read it, you'll understand how each of those categories are to be utilized, funding wise. Right. And you just can't move. You know, when I first started out there, you can move money from seven to two. It's back and forth, and and you can't. I didn't know that, right? So once you understand those rules, understand then the second thing is, you know, the IBTC. It's, it's a regional project, and it was a number one project when we mer even before we merged for the Hidalgo County. The reason is because it serves, okay, it serves McMission, McAllen, Far, Progreso, and Donna. Mm -hmm. we, we knew that we needed to alleviate all that truck traffic from all our cities, because whether you realize, realize it or not, it's a safety issue for us, but also as a, as a, as a mayor, we keep paying for those streets, which TxDOT does not pay for us. We have to pay for it, which chews up our budgets for McAllen Fire Mission, and where we can't utilize that money for firefighters or anything because I keep having to repair my damn streets. Yeah. And so, and then you have a, we have a problem. And so we knew it's a safety problem. It is an absolutely an economic problem for us who are along the border, right? And we need the first, first initiative, which Cameron County was uh, gracious enough to help us with. We needed to do the 281 exchange as part of this whole deal because it, it could not handle the truck traffic that's coming through it. Mm -hmm. So they helped us put all these letters together to get that funded. The next priority for us was the IBTC so we can move north and south. <clears throat> Military highway has been upgraded, as you know, and the 365 tollway también, but it just keeps going east and west. It doesn't solve our problems for the ones who have bridges, our cities. Right. Uh, you know, Brownsville, and then they're lucky they have the interstate, but we need to get to the interstate, and it opens up underneath Edinburgh's airport. So, and therefore, we alleviate all those problems. And at the end of the day, it helps our bridges. But locally, it helps us from a safety standpoint for all our cities that are mentioned, but also for our taxpayers because I don't want to keep spending all, all that revenue that I keep spending for all those streets every year because they make potholes and they just destroy our streets. Right. And yes, I Mayor. I understand that. But I'm, just, I'm, yes. I'm just, you know, I'm thinking well, as I'm yes, hearing. Sir. But wouldn't that be like a regional uh, It is a regional problem. So wouldn't that qualify for an on system like you're saying or no is this a yeah yeah let me let me speak to, yeah. to okay so to answer your question ibtc stands for international bridge and trade corridor and so it basically connects the the various uh, international bridges to the interstate system in addition to that we talked the mayor mentioned that it connects to the airport that takes into account state highway 68 project that TxDOT is currently working on from interstate 2 north and west to connect to US-21 I-69C. And so uh, we do have on file, ma'am, a request, not only for IBTC, but also for East Loop uh, from the RMAs to TxDOT 
requesting that these projects become on system so they can qualify for other category funding, uh, as you mentioned earlier. Right. And so we, we're going to evaluate that. Uh, what we have asked the RM, both RMAs <clears throat> is to continue the project development process, environmental, schematic, right-of-way utilities, PSNE, basically have it shovel ready. At that point, we will evaluate how feasible it is to be able to bring these projects on system and possibly qualify for more funding, for other category funding. And so that is the, the task that the, both RMAs are wor working very hard at, uh, trying to develop these projects and getting them shovel ready so that we can evaluate what, what funding opportunities are there. I will also share uh, that uh, during recent commission meetings, we have talked, uh, say, text commission meetings, we have talked about leveraging. And it is imperative that we, we take our commissioners' comments into consideration. Uh, it was stated that for projects to be considered for Category 12 funding moving forward, one thing that is being looked at is the leveraging of the local dollars. What does that mean? The, the, the percentage that was thrown out there was 50% local, 50% Category 12, possibly. And so we're looking at finding ways to leverage these projects. And so when you look at projects like IBTC and East Loop uh, that have as being proposed by, by the MPO staff, 20 million, it's getting us closer to that 50% so that this region can then potentially apply for future funding for these projects. So uh, we need to continue to work together as partners. Communication is key. Uh, Mayor, we, we ourselves, as well as the MPO, I can't speak for Andrew, but I know that they've already committed to meeting with you all, are more than happy to sit down for you and anyone here at the policy board to explain the various processes for the MPO and TxDOT and the rules and, uh, that we have to abide by. And so uh, we, we open, uh, we extend that invitation to you as well. I do want to point out a couple of things now that I have the mic and, and I appreciate that. Rudy, can you go back to the table that had the first four years, that one right there. Oh, sorry, here you go. A couple of things, folks. Uh, the first four years of the UTP or the MTP is the fiscally constraint. We have to be fiscally constrained with FHWA, Federal Highway, and I apologize for all the acronyms. So that's, that's one thing that we all are challenged with. Federal Highway Administration, uh, we have to be in the first four years within our budget. And so this table demonstrates that the first four years we are within budget, which is great. Year five is in the red, that means negative budget. We don't know what's gonna happen next year. We're gonna be going through the exact same process next summer. And so as things mature, projects led, some come over budget, some under budget, these numbers are gonna fluctuate. But I wanted to point out and I want to recognize the MPO for their efforts mm -hmm. to make sure that we are within our budget the first four years. That's really, really important. And then the second comment that I want to make is the data is only as good as the information that's being provided to the MPO and TxDOT from our local governments. What does that mean? These forms that are being filled out have to be true and accurate. Accurate dates, accurate percentage complete, accurate uh, proposed delivery uh, of, of the project. Things like that are tools or resources that we are both utilizing to properly rank the projects. Then the local government prioritizes their projects. So I encourage all local governments to continue to invest local dollars to develop these projects. The form that we just approved gives credit for environmental, schematic, right away, and, and local funding that's made available so that these projects will score higher. In the past, we have made the commitment, I think we're gonna to continue to honor that commitment, that projects that are shovel ready will basically go to the top of the list. So that's, uh, that's really the carrot out there for all the local governments. Get your project shovel ready so that this policy board can make decisions, accurate decisions, as to what are truly the higher priority projects. Okay. Yes. So like, well, let's just, I'm not picking on a dog with Cammy. Uh, like we get to 2024 and two of those projects aren't ready to spend that money. Refresh my memory what we did. Don't, can't we start moving it around to other projects? Yes, right. Mr. Park, exactly. So if a particular project isn't quite ready to go to letting, which is the term we use that it's ready to go to construction, we may need to at that time work with the local governments and our partners at TxDOT to find the correct fiscal year to program that project currently and possibly accelerate or move forward another project that is ready. And as our partners at TxDOT, and Mr. Olivet has always mentioned during our meetings, is projects within the TIP 
can be moved around administratively. So we don't have to go through a full revision process, don't have to get these items approved. We just simply shuffle projects that are already approved to be within those first four years as needed. So we do have a project, like you mentioned, that maybe isn't ready. We need to push it back a bit. We can move another project forward as long as we stay within that fiscal constraint. Thank you. Yes, of course. And now that we've covered this, which is something that I wanted to go over, this is where we stand and we, we can see the, the two areas that currently have Category 7 funds program, which is the Brownsville area and Hidalgo County area. And the numbers are where we are with allocation, carryover, how much is available. And this particular table shows the proposed planned programming if we were to move forward with these proposed projects that are on that list and that we mentioned before. So it does show the over-programming amount that we went over earlier. And at this time, I'd like to entertain any other questions before moving on to the last table I wanted to show, which is a complete listing of prioritized projects. Okay, go ahead. So at this point here, what we went ahead and did is provided every single project that we reviewed with the local governments that originally submitted their requests. So from Cameron County and the Cameron County Regional Mobility Authority, the City of Mission, the City of McAllen, the City of Farr, the City of Edinburgh, everybody that submitted the entire county of Hidalgo, precincts one through four, every project here that was submitted is listed. We've included what exactly was being requested, the amount, the project score, its priority, the current year that it is programmed in and the current amount of those that are being proposed where in other words what's currently allocated or programmed to that project as well as some extra notes if you will a status on the project where it is and, and if for some reason we couldn't choose it as priority one or fund it the reason why in the box on the last column there so if it's not functionally classified for instance and I'd like to touch base briefly on this and I know we've been on this item for quite some time so I'll be brief. The yellow highlighted are the projects. Yes, thank you, Andrew. That's, that's correct. Everything that's highlighted is being proposed and is included in those totals we went over previously. So, for instance, South Parallel Corridor, which is listed under the Cameron County CCRMA section. You'll notice that it's pending its functional classification. Currently, it's programmed within our new short-range plan, the STIP in years 23 to 26, it has a construction phase fully funded with local dollars. Once this project is functionally classified, we are then able to add federal funding to that project. So we, we made that note there. If we're going to move forward with identifying federal funds on this project, will it have to be listed in 2027? If it's not functionally classified, yes. But is that going to affect its FC status as far as what we're proposing to the federal government, to FHWA, it might as well. So that's something that we need to work with our tech stop partners with, communicate with FHWA with, and make sure that we don't jeopardize the process of functional classification. Now we can document and remember if it is so decided by the board that they want to award that money to that project, we'll know that once it's classified, we program that money in the correct year that it needs it, which would be within the TIP years, fiscal year 26 as of right now. So just an example, these notes are very helpful and we're more than willing to expand on any other information that might be needed regarding these projects that weren't selected and of course those that were proposed. I shouldn't say selected, proposed. As long as the local government spend their money accelerated, they move up the list. It does help the process, especially for the preliminary engineering and right of way phases, yes. Yes, Mayor. But that's basically what's listed on this table. And then once again, oh, this is actually a very good graph that was put together by a colleague of mine, Melanie. These are the fiscal years within the TIP, the short range plan, 23, 24, 25, and 26. This is the total amount of federal participation, state participation, and local participation. This is very helpful in understanding how much money is actually being contributed by the federal, state, and local share for each project. So I thought it was very helpful. Well, the colors are just more for identification purposes. Blue, blue, and is, blue is federal, green is state, and yes. red is local. 
Blue is federal, green is state, amber is local. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. <clears throat> yes, sir. The Shum project really on the, um, the list as far as the yellow, the overall, the couple of pages before that slide. Sure. Those two projects consist of all of the additional projects or? Um, as I mentioned, going back to the beginning of the year when we initially received all those requests for over 200 million, uh, we then met with the local governments. They resubmitted their requests, uh, prioritized. And so what we have is everything that we received from those meetings or from the revised, if you will, uh, submittals of Category 7 requests. And then we have them prioritized at least, you know, one and two, if not one through four, in some cases more. But like I mentioned, the ones that are highlighted are the ones that are being proposed as of today. So they're the, legal gov they're the gov local government prioritization. They're not scored or they're not pri listed in scoring priority or anything like that. Well, uh, submitted by the local governments and prioritized as well within our meetings that we had. So depending on what the project status was and the need for the project is how they went about prioritizing them, and that's how we have them listed here. I was just going to say, because we, we now have a scoring system of 100, so I guess we'll convert that on the percentages and all of that. Good stuff. And that's a good question, Ramon, and that's why on some of the tables you'll see that staff included the percentages because we realize that looking at something that says you scored a 110 out of 170 mm -hmm. doesn't really tell you how it did. So they did convert that over to a percentage as well on the table. And uh, just for information purposes, I, I just want to back up a little bit. We did begin this process with our first uh, region-wide workshop on March 17th. So we sort of had an idea encapsulated on what the figures were going to be, and we all met. Uh, I know you were there as part of that. It was virtual, uh, but we did do that on a virtual basis with a workshop inclusive of everyone going over the numbers, sort of getting a, a guidance of where we were going to go. And that's what gave birth to the idea of having one-on-one -on -one workshops with the local governments so we could sort of identify um, out of like the 200 million we got, which was an impossible ask, you know, what are your top three? That's what I asked everybody on every meeting we had. What are your top three projects? I'm not really, it's not that I'm not interested in your top six, just knowing the limitation on funding, what's your top three? Uh, and then we covered that again uh, June 9th at TAC. And then on June 29th uh, at Policy Board, we had a sort of a regurgitation of the information as well. So it's been a multi-month, multi-tiered process. Um, and unfortunately, not everybody got everything they asked for. That's, that's just the truth of it. Or, the, you know, they, they may. These are recommendations. We just as staff took the information that we had that was provided to us by the local governments, by TxDOT, and the funding that we knew that we had available uh, tried to come up with the best prioritized projects off of those recommendations. I will say out of the recommendations that we received and request, every priority one project was fulfilled. And in some cases, every, uh, in some cases, priority one and two, and in a couple of cases, priority two and three. And in some of those cases, it's a little bit of a misnomer, uh, and we're grateful for it, but like Mission and McAllen have a joint project uh, with uh, Taylor Road, each asked for funding for that. Mich uh, McAllen is aware that uh, Mission is the lead and we'll have to work with them because they're on the AFA, so that funding will actually shift over. Uh, or is Mission the lead? I think it's Mission, I apologize. Yes, Mission is the yeah, lead. Mission, yes. So Mission actually is gonna get eight million and change instead of 6.3, but that's because of the collaboration and cooperation going on there. And then we have a similar process again with the city of McAllen. They seem to be partnering quite a bit with uh, Precinct 4 and Commissioner Torres on Russell Road. You know, uh, so while it looks like, you know, uh, maybe that McAllen got everything, well, they didn't. They only got really one project that was McAllen-centric. The other two were in partnership, which is what we invite everybody to do because the county, uh, Commissioner Torres, is the lead on that project. So that money will actually shift it won't even show McAllen. It will show Precinct 4 because on the AFA, they're the lead. So there, there are some nuances to it uh, as well that may look, I, I don't want anybody to look at it and go, well, they got everything. That, that may not necessarily be the case. And I just wanted to explain that because um, some of them are regional and there are partnerships on these projects that made them significant to move forward with for recommendation. Ramon, why don't you speak into the mic, please? 
sorry. Uh, for clarification, just for the purpose, um, I don't know if it's considered a new project or an old project, but IBTC is not on that list. Okay. Which, which list? The, the highlighted or the, um, I guess it's because it was an old project before. It was already listed on the tip prior. Actually, already... Ramon, if I could address that. Um, so it wasn't a part of the original request Correct. they were received by staff. Correct. So only the projects that were initially received from the local governments and then prioritize are actually listed within those tables. And International that's, an excellent, that's an excellent point, Ramon, for clarification for everybody, because I know there's been some questions. Staff at no time received a request from the RMA for IBTC or the other or Cameron County RMA for East Loop. Staff took that initiative because the board has identified that they were the number one and two. And just for informational purposes, they're also the two highest scoring projects within the region. So staff took that initiative to place that money on those projects in hopes of trying to leverage for greater state or federal dollars in the future since we have been told since inception that those were our number one and number two projects. So not wanting you to be on the hot seat or Pete we didn't receive anything with that recommendation. It was something that we moved forward with, with information we've received since the inception of the RGV MPO. That's true. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you know, when we merged the MPO, that is what was stated from the get-go when we were merging. We told our colleagues, you told your colleagues in Cameron, I told mine in Hallow County, uh, we're going to prioritize, and these are not one and two regional projects for the Rio Grande Valley. And that's what we told uh, the governor, obviously, when we signed. And you're right. I mean, there is... We never submitted a document to it, but we knew we merged and we stated it's all over the media. I mean, it's, it's no and, secret. And the record before and since the merger has had those two projects as priorities for our individual uh, regions, Cameron and Annie Valley. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Andrew, uh, is there, can we go back to this table? Sure. I think this is a very yes, useful sir. table. The, last, wanna, the last page? Yeah. I just want to recognize the local governments that have been putting and leveraging projects. So if you look at the first couple of projects, 14, 9, 9, 10, 9%, the yellow. That's local participation, getting projects shovel ready. Yet the state comes in 18, 19%. Federal dollars comes in 67 to 73%. What does that mean? Basically... For every dollar, you get $10 back. That's the encouragement for all the local governments. Get your project shovel ready. And the, the facts are the facts, folks. And al although these projects may be off system, category seven, the state is still participating, in some cases up to 20%, when it comes to putting, uh, putting money into these projects, even though they're off system, because of the economic disadvantaged county. We're just following the Texas Administrative Code. but. I just want to recognize that federal and state dollars become available when you get your project shovel ready. On that note, board members, if there's any other questions or concerns, Mayor? yes. Well, pri prioritize, Mayor, yes, but just not proposed at this time. And as per our meeting that we had last week, we did go over a few items that were crucial to in the planning process, and it doesn't mean that we won't revisit these projects here in the near future. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any other questions? I can let's close up. First of all, I want to recognize Mayor Goddess. I apologize for not recognizing you. This is your first meeting, correct? As a second, I apologize. I should have done that earlier. Uh, second. Based upon all of the comments, questions, concerns uh, that have been raised, Rudy and, and uh, Andrew, I think over the next four weeks, you have a lot of work to do with regards to getting together with the different uh, cities and their uh, administrations and their elected officials to address many of the issues that have been raised here today. Um, and I think the most important thing that we want to garner from today's discussion is that um, there's not as much money as we originally thought. Projects do take priority, and, and our overriding concern is if it's shovel-ready, whether it's, and 
one end or the other end, that we, we have to keep moving forward because sitting on money, which TxDOT, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, is going to get us and uh, lose us a lot of opportunity, leverage uh, and return on our dollars. So that's why uh, he mentioned it, Mayor Ambrosio mentioned it, I've mentioned it, everybody get your projects as shovel ready as you can because the fact is if we keep waiting for the feds or the state to do it for us, it's not gonna happen. So what was the word that we used that, that the state has a net, that the sh shovel ready, but you had another uh, name for it. No, no, no. You had another. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't that. <laughs> you had a name for, 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 for the state text dot project saying if when it's ready to go we're going to take it um, I can't think of it right now it was a couple of meetings back I thought it was I thought it was your idea or, or a new state policy uh, but I don't think it was stack them and rack them but but it was something along those same lines but uh, so in other words my understanding is we have to have a decision at the next um, policy board meeting correct I'd like to, Mayor. We can actually uh, have it until October for the November submittal, but I will be in Minnesota during the policy board meeting. Now, I can be here virtually, but we were trying to get this taken care of uh, I, I, as soon as possible because I, I, I don't see a lot of wiggle room. But I would think that if you have these meetings over the next three weeks uh, for our meeting next month, we should be able to to get this done. Yes, sir. Because I think today was extremely uh, informational, even if it's not all what we all wanted to hear. Fact of the matter is, um, sounds like we don't have enough. But I will point out that in the last three years, four years, we've gone from 500 million for our district, being the valley, to 2.2.5 billion. That's a direct that's a direct result of the merger. So so we actually have more pennies to deal with. But the fact of the matter is, it's still not enough, but it's better than what we had. So. I, I would like to ask the board for one bit of guidance, uh, judge if we can, just for moving forward, because I think it would help us in communication with our local government partners. Not counting the allocation that we know we have for the Harlingen San Benito, and I've already talked to Gabe, and I've talked to Manny about his visiting the future on that. We're negative 20 million. For the over our, over our tip? Yes, sir. What is the range that the policy board is comfortable with? Because I would hate to go back and have a conversation with a local government and they come in with more projects and I have to come back to the policy board and we're 35 million negative, not counting the 12. Pete, I think you have to give us some guidance there. So where's the, where's the, where's the, the pain point or the breaking point? Or Yeah, I, I think we need to be very careful. We need to use numbers that are, that are realistic. Um, when you look at a 10-year plan, the first four years really have to be solid. Years five through 10 are a little, depends. It all depends, right, as projects mature. I would not feel comfortable with going over the, the 20 million personally because, yeah, it may be six years worth of planning dollars, but you don't want to go through a threshold that's way above that because then that will draw a flag. We will be questioned and we may be told remove anything and everything that's above your allocation. So 20 million to me is, is, is probably pushing the limit already. And so that, that would be my recommendation. So maybe even a preference would be if, if it's possible, don't know if it, it would be, but uh, to try to draw that number down. Yes, it, 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 would, it would look even better. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I just wanted to have that so as we visit with local governments that we didn't have more coming in on the negative side. So yeah, staff, have, staff appreciates that. Gabe, thank you. Okay. I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Gabe. Okay, I would there. like to recommend that if, or ask that if we do get our project to shovel ready to the Harlingen Summit, the region, that the policy consider that at that point in time because we are working on some Cat 7 projects that may be ready within a year or a year and a half. And, and I think that's, that's, that's the push for, for you and for everybody else. So I, I, we, we'd like to have that dilemma that we have all these shovel ready projects and then we're having to priority, prioritize because at that point we can then put a lot more pressure on TxDOT and saying we're ready to go. Okay. Thank you. But, and, and, but the fluid, uh, the, the plans continue to be fluid. So, all right, um, go right ahead. Yeah.
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Can I have a motion to acknowledge the discussion? Who had, who had the motion? Motion by Mr. Parker, second by Ramon. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, members. Next month will be a little bit uh, shorter, right, Rudy? <laughs> I hope so. All right. <laughs> All right, item seven, discussion possible action on the adoption of the RGV MPO public participation plan, PPP resolution 2022-17. Good afternoon, policy board members. My name is Chris Nelson. I'm a transportation planner on MPO staff. Um, I'm going to be giving a presentation on the amended public participation plan. Uh, so this is an amendment to the original public participation plan, which was adopted on September 25th of 2019. Uh, that plan is the document that actually guides the public involvement process that we follow uh, prior to the adoption of any of the documents that we produce at the MPO. Um, some of the changes that we have made in this amendment uh, include that we have tra we have translated the Title VI complaint form so that way it's in both English and Spanish. We have also included language um, incorporating uh, Star County into the document because, as as you may be aware, Star County a portion of it has since been added into our metropolitan area boundary, which are the planning boundaries for the MPO. Um, so we updated that language, and then also we uh, added language strengthening the MPO's uh, commitment. Um, to uh, virtual public involvement, so that way interested citizens have that option in addition to doing involvement in person. Um, so this, this document, the public participation plan, was required to undergo a 45-day public involvement period. That began on July 15th and, uh, and concludes today on August 31st. So with that being said, this is an action item. Uh, and uh, If today's the, the end day, can we approve it today or do we have to wait? Yes, sir. That's oh, what I was getting. Right, that's right. what I was getting to. Actually, this is a this is an action item for that reason, and we are proposing the approval of a resolution to adopt the amended plan. Anybody have any questions for Chris? With those uh, changes in that recommendation, uh, you recommend approval. Yes, sir. Chris. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Make a motion. motion by Stark County. Second by McAllen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 8, discussion on the RGV MPO request for proposal RFP for fiscal year 2022-2023. Uh, additionally, the MPO is proposing to release three different requests for proposal um, to go through them pretty fast. Uh, the first one will be a corridor study of FM 509 in Harlingen. The second one would be the performance management framework development and implementation study. And the third one would be the comprehensive Sustainability and resiliency analysis for MPOs. Items to be completed for the corridor study will include a traffic data and uh, will include uh, traffic data and projections, safety analysis, traffic and operational analysis and evaluation of constraints, and feasibility of implementation. For the performance management study, this is going to be looking at our scoring criteria and looking at to, to what extent uh, our current scoring criteria and policies address the performance goals of the MPO and then also address the goals of our state and federal partners and then uh, recommending potential changes that can be made in order to better address those performance goals. And then for the resiliency analysis, um, this would be looking at the different resiliency challenges that can potentially be faced in the region and looking at how um, we are currently addressing those through both our scoring criteria and also our existing policies and then seeking to actually develop a methodology that we can follow at the MPO to make sure that we're selecting projects and also having policies that are um, are conducive to uh, to uh, adequately addressing those sort of resiliency challenges in the region. So this is an informational item. All right, any questions? If not, I have a motion to acknowledge. Motion by Pete. Second. Second by Mayor Ambrosio. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries item nine. Discussion and update on the RGB traffic safety initiative activities. Yes, sir. This is just an update quickly. As you know, we received a grant uh, through TxDOT on some bicycle safety equipment. Uh, Eva has been working diligently on that. We have some workshops coming up I wanted to make the board aware of. Uh, next week in this room, uh, September 6, 2.30 to 4.30, we'll be holding our first law enforcement training. The next day at the Harlingen Cultural Event Center. September 7th, 2.30 to 4.30, also a law enforcement training. And then we will have two project manager trainings, Harlingen Cultural Arts Center, September 9th, that Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 11. And then back here in this uh, meeting room on September 14th, 9.30 to 11. 
in some of the pictures there on your screen, I want to say that we had phenomenal turnouts. Uh, it was the Harlingen um, uh, National Night Out event on the bottom left-hand corner, and on the right hand, we were at the uh, Children's Hospital over on Sugar Road. We were invited to come out there and participate with that. We had several hundred children who came out, so we were able to hand out bicycle helmets, uh, bike lights, and other safety materials uh, to the families, and it was tremendously successful. So. Just wanted to make you aware of the training dates that we had coming up for law enforcement. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, sir. Item 10, discussion and possible action on the IIJA <laughs> infrastructure BIL, is specifically on the Safe Streets for All grant program. Good afternoon, policy board members. My name is Javier Dominguez. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, to the next slide. All right, perfect. So I'm going to be talking to you today, two items on the agenda. The first one I'm going to break into three subjects, so I'll try to be as concise as possible. But again, we're always here to answer any questions if there are any. The first subject on this agenda, we'll be talking about this uh, announcement schedule for the notice of funding opportunities for the Department of Transportation Infrastructure Bill uh, grants. Um, the first the programs highlighted in yellow, again, are programs that list MPOs as eligible entities that we're able to apply for. The bridge investment program has three grant applications, two of which the um, deadlines have passed, but there's one left, the bridge project, which is due September 8th, in case anyone is still interested in putting together an application um, that our local governments would like to go do so. I just wanted to provide that brief update. For Safe Streets for All, the deadline is September 15th. I'll be talking that a little bit more in detail on subject number two. Uh, they have provided an update. That update being that award announcements are expected to come out at the end of this calendar year or beginning of next calendar year. So hopefully soon, just around the corner, I can be back here again and give you guys the good news that we were awarded. I uh, gotta stay positive. And um, the last one is the deadline for the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Program. That deadline is October 13th. So I just wanted to let everyone know that for the notice of funding opportunity for the Safe Streets for All application, there was an amendment uh, released at the beginning of the month. They asked the applicants to use the 2019 American Community Survey five-year estimate population projections instead of the 2020 census data. So we went ahead and updated that num those numbers for our application. Uh, on the map you see here in the region, there's a black line. That black line is the metropolitan area boundary. And within that area is the area that the MPO has a capability to complete feasibility studies and plans. So we're looking to encompass the, almost or if not the entirety of this area for our um, the first region-wide uh, comprehensive safety action plan uh, with our application. Um, and the population within this black boundary line uh, is roughly 1,339,808 people. You see further divisions within that boundary. Those are census tracts. The census tracts that are highlighted in that blue color are census tracts that are designated by the U.S. Department of Transportation in the RAISE grant, uh, when the application for the RAISE grant went out, where 20% uh, of the population live at or below the poverty line for during the three previous uh, decennial census data sets. So that means that the population has to live, 20% uh, of the population has to live at or below the poverty line um, during the 1990, the 2000, and the 2010 census data sets. Um, and the population within those blue census tracts are 718,275. And so that means that 53% of the population here in the Valley uh, live within historically disadvantaged communities. Uh, so that's a big number, that's over half of the population. Um, so I think this helps paint, uh, paint a really good picture for us and makes us a really strong candidate for this application. Uh, something else that we added to this map, another layer, you see those red spots across the area. Those are the number of colonias that we have in the region. Um, and just as a quick little uh, disclaimer, the, uh, the information we have for colonias are primarily for Cameron and Hidalgo counties. Uh, we have yet to update that for Star County, but once we do get that update, uh, we will come back here to the policy board and provide that update. Uh, so. Um, within our metropolitan area boundary, there are 700, over 700 colonias, um, and then inside those historically disadvantaged communities, there's over 400. So just, again, something that can help, uh, help us become a better, stronger candidate uh, for this application. Uh, I do just want to say thank you to all of our planning partners. I have been reaching out, uh, and I've been getting great feedback from everybody. Um, the first great piece of feedback that we've gotten is the development of a grant subcommittee. So we are applying for both the Safe Streets for All and the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Program. 
program and if and when we get awarded both uh, applications or grants, um, we would be utilizing the subcommittee for the, the grant subcommittee for the development uh, of both of those plans and they work hand in hand and I can give a great example of that in the next subject line when I go start talking about that other program. So overall, I just wanted to let everyone know that we've received uh, 11 letters of support from both RMAs, transit agencies, and cities across the region. So we've gotten great support, we've gotten great feedback, and I look forward to working uh, with everybody on this. Um, but that being said, um, unfortunately, the MPO cannot uh, match federal funds with federal funds. So we are applying for $500,000 for the application. And so the 20% local match would be 100,000. And so here today I'm asking the policy board for a vote or recommendation on how we can go about asking for the local match of 100,000. Um, I've uh, provided in front of you two possible scenarios, but I've left the third blank, obviously, so I can leave the uh, discussion open for recommendations. Um, since this is truly region-wide, we can look at the three counties um, for help for the local match, and we broke it down by population within our MAB. So Hidalgo County makes up 64% of the population, Cameron County makes up 31% 31, 31 of the population, and Star County makes up 5%. So this is one way that we can help uh, reach out and help um, our local planning partners and ask for the local match. We can also look at um, trying to see however many of local governments we can ask to partner and, and provide the letters of commitment. Um, and then divided equally or by population. Um, but at this time, um, leaving the, tip, the floor open for recommendations or hearing feedback from the policy board on how you guys would deem it be best for right. us to look for the local Javier, we're gonna try to move the meeting up. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, quickly, the, the grant that you are submitting is for the entire region. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes. So if, if no, I'm sorry, when we're successful, then uh, the the committee subcommittee is going to have the discussion. Obviously, bring it back to TAC and, and the policy to make recommendations as to how we can uh, utilize uh, that particular federal monies. Right? Yes. Okay. The other dilemma is that you've got a deadline to submit the application on September 15th. Yes, sir. Plus, you need so you need to have that hundred thousand dollar match at least the commitment. Mm -hmm. We don't have to submit it. You just have to have the commitment on yes, there. Yes, right. All right. Um, so I would recommend, uh, I think the uh, first, uh, the way we do everything else uh, option probably fits, but none of us individually can commit our particular entity. So mm -hmm. I think we can make, approve it subject to uh, the individual entities. Pete, how, how, would, how would we, what would you suggest? Well, I mean, it'd be the same for, for, for both. I mean, and, we could ratify it at a court and then and then ask for and as, as for commitments. Same thing with Hidalgo. You could you, we could approve it, or you could approve the county, and then ask for for buy-in from the cities. But worst case scenario, as usual, we take the lead. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think if I can have a motion to approve subject to uh, individual approval prior to. September the 15th, that way you've got some, but because none, obviously we have to pre present it before our particular uh, yes, boards yes. and commissions. Yes, yes. All right, all right, motion by uh, Pete uh, to approve with the option one subject to ratification by the counties and the uh, cities, mm -hmm. second by Star County. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries, all right. Thank you. Discussion on the Texas Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Plan. Uh, so this is the just a quick brief update, just letting everybody know that TxDOT has submitted a plan to FHWA at the beginning of this month uh, for the Texas Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Plan. Um, over this next year, they're looking to be building out corridors. You can see here in blue. So in the bottom there in the valley, you see the corridor that they're looking to implement uh, EV charging stations within the first year. Um, and then within years two through five, you see here they're looking to planning out and spreading out further across the state. Uh, you see here on the on the plan, um, they list city specific specifically, but that's just a, a placeholder, uh, it's a general area, so in the Edinburgh area there's going to be six, the McAllen area there's going to be eight, in the Raymondville area there's going to be six, in San Benito area there's going to be eight. In year two they're looking to implement about eight uh, in the Rio Grande City area. Um, the reason why I bring this up here at the MPO meeting is because the MPO in the second year of this plan will be helping TxDOT uh, not only propose locations but the type of charging stations and uh, we also will be getting allocations from TxDOT um, which will come from both federal money as as well as um, 
private sector money. Uh, and so that allocation is uh, about 6325223 over five years. And they also gave us a five-year allocation uh, for five-year operation and maintenance. So just I just wanted to make this announcement something to look forward to. We're very excited about it. And then last but not least, right there for the, t uh, the top 20 EV registrations by county, uh, NCT Cog over in the Dallas-Fort Worth area worked with uh, TxDOT um, and looking at uh, bi-monthly the, the number of uh, EVs registered by county. And Hidalgo County and Cameron County listed top 20 across the whole state out of all 254 counties with the total number of EVs registered. So I just wanted to show that there's a lot of, there's a growing number of EVs registered in the counties uh, here in the Valley, and uh, we're going to be getting this amazing opportunity. Um, uh, Textile will be working with the local governments next year, and then the MPOs um, in year two of this plan. All right. Thank you for that report. Item five, RGB MPO Executive Director's Report and Update. Uh, yes, sir. I know it's incredible to believe that we're thinking of forward ahead on the holidays. And the COG has a combined meeting for November and December on December 14th, 2022. Since the RGV MPO follows the same schedule, staff is seeking approval to shift our joint meeting to the same day as December 14th, 2022. All right. You need a vote on that? No, sir. Just okay. if there's no. Any, does anyone have an issue on that? Obviously, because of the holidays. We did, we did that. We've done that in the past. Fantastic. The 2023 UTP public comment period obviously is closed. UTP adopted yesterday. There's a copy on your uh, desk, on your tabletop, of the letter that was sent out by Judge Trevino representing the region, as well as a uh, response from Chairman Bug. We just wanted to provide that to you for information purposes. Uh, the city of Donna unfortunately made the MPO aware that they are formally they formally notified us of their decision to terminate their TASA project. Their transportation alternative, they were unable to move forward successfully with that project with some hiccups on that sidewalk project uh, taken in uh, over at the railroad uh, crossing area that they had and the funds did expire. So we wanted to let the board know it's the first time we've had that situation happen, but the funds did expire and they did uh, formally terminate uh, that project. And then finally, the 2022 thoroughfare plan project is uh, process is underway. Uh, Luis is your contact man on that. Uh, he's already had one uh, 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 virtual workshop on that. Uh, December 21st will be the uh, 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 end of that, the termination, and then we'll move forward to each one of the counties for approval of the thoroughfare plan and bring it back to the policy board, board for approval at that time too. For anybody unaware, the thoroughfare plan is simply uh, the process that the MPO goes through annually to work with all local governments to identify and preserve right away on wherever there may be future expansion. Uh, so that way, uh, the local government has a legal uh, document, if you will, when new development comes in to be able to make sure that that footprint is preserved so you're not in a situation of trying to purchase that right away in the future when they build all the way out to the street. So with that, uh, Chairman, I have no other update. Uh, if you could quickly address the financial update. Oh, Andrew. yes, sir. Uh, we're under. <laughs> well, I say I can quickly update it. Uh, at this point, we are uh, we should be at 41.67 percent expended on our budget. Uh, we are 28 percent expended at this point. Uh, we know that some of those numbers will come up because our congestion study program is now starting to receive billings from the consultant. So that will bring us closer to where we need to be as we come into midway of our two-year uh, budget, which uh, terminates at the end of September. So we are a little under, but right on task. All right. Anybody have any questions for Andrew? If not, uh, the chair is going to exercise his discretion, and we're going to pass on the presentation of the status reports due to the length of today's meeting. If, you have any, if anybody has any questions or concerns with regards to that, uh, let, uh, let Andrew know. I'm sure the presenters are really disappointed in that. <laughs> Item 7, is there any other business, old or new? All right. If not, our next meeting, September 28, 2022, at 1.30 here. We'll see you next month. We have a motion to adjourn by Pete, second by Star County. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carried. We stand adjourned. 308. Where am I? <laughs>